Well, self-harming can be, of course, in a variety of ways. The most obvious thing is when people start hurting themselves or cutting themselves on the wrist or whatever, or deciding to kill themselves and so on. But we think about self-harming, there's many different levels. What if I go around thinking of myself as a failure all the time? Or I think somebody is going to, to reject me? Or what if I fear I'm going to be harmed? Or I'm going to be robbed? Or now we might fear I'm going to be shot by somebody, you know, coming into school and shooting the kids. And if I'm visiting, I might get shot, you know, and so on. We have those thoughts. But what we need to do is to use these tools that help us get rid of those thoughts or get rid of that early programming so they can be kind and loving to ourselves. We need to know that it's love and compassion that heal fear and anxiety. Following our fears and anxiety does not help us. We think it's going to protect us and all it does is cause us to attract more of it. And so that's not a useful way for us to function. We need to find other tools where we can relax. Like one simple thing is, if I just take slow deep breaths, what does that do? It puts oxygen to my brain. It calms down the cortisol and adrenaline. Gives more fuel to my left and right hemispheres in my brain, which help me be more creative and intelligent in dealing with whatever the problems are. And if I do it at that level, it's far more effective than just doing something out of fear and stress. And so if I can find the ways to be kind to myself and loving to myself, and to know that's the most powerful way to support myself, and not the other ways, I think this other thing's going to do it. I'm going to have two more drinks, or I'm going to uh, do this, or tell that person off about what they did that was wrong first, or whatever. That no, those won't solve the problem as much. They might just perpetuate it at another level. But we need to use the tools that we can free ourselves of that stress, and that anxiety, that fear, and or the anger. And the anger is, of course, always a secondary emotion. It takes a more vulnerable emotion to trigger anger. But we think that anger is going to make us okay or protect us. No, it attracts more of the difficulty and it just puts the negative energy in our bodies. So we need to find the ways that really work that give us the utmost strength for positive successes and the use of our intelligence and creativity to stay healthy and happy and successful relationships and successful careers. Self-harming originates because of the ways we were treated and the ways we experienced the way we were treated. And our parents just passed things on, like in the ancient Jewish tradition, somebody recognized that several thousand years ago, when somebody said, and the sins of the fathers shall be visited to the third and fourth generations. Somebody recognized that thousands of years ago, and but they didn't have tools for getting past it then. And now we know the same thing may happen. We can keep the old tools that work from the ways we were treated, or our parents were treated, or their grandparents were treated, and that's passed on generationally. And unless we use these other tools to deactivate those, we may stuck in, stay stuck in that system. But fortunately, we now have the tools where the, those can be deactivated. That old programming, just like you press a delete button on programs in your computer you don't want, we can do the same thing with our brains now because the brain is where the computer came from. Certainly, if you'd like to learn more about these methods or these tools or the combinations of them and how they work, I'll be glad to talk with you about it. You could contact me by phone or by email, or you could call me and we could make an appointment or two, and we could discuss it more in relation to your area, your issues, your problem areas, and what would be effective for you to do together. So I'd be happy to explore those things with you. I have a, uh, people who want to come in person can see me in New York City or in Westport, Connecticut. Um, others may prefer to have a session by Zoom or telephone or FaceTime or things like that. So that's possible too, especially during this coronavirus situation. So whatever works for you is, uh, I'm open to, to explore with you. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have about what this therapy is like.